we are making a tier ranking list of the top types of careers that you can choose in finance. If you haven't seen videos like this before, S is the best rank, uh, then you have A, B, C, D. I don't know why S is red and D is green. I feel like the color scales there should be reversed. I'm also a little bit upset that this website doesn't have an F tier. I think it makes sense to have S as the superior level and then A, B, C, D, F, just like the regular grading scale, at least how it works in the United States. But we're gonna work with what we have. It makes sense, you got it. S is the best is the worst. The list of careers available in the finance industry isn't all encompassing, but it includes a lot of the big ones. So this will be pretty fun. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to see other cool finance related videos like this. And let's get into it. Okay, we are just gonna go in order here, starting out with asset management, which is admittedly is a very vague term. I'm gonna talk about that. But actually, I'm putting it pretty high up on the list. I'm going to give it an A. Asset management can mean a lot of different things, so it's not exactly a career in and of itself. But I think it makes sense for purposes of this list because asset management is the more technical way to describe what a lot of people coming up through the early parts of their career or maybe just in college think of as being an investor. Asset management will also include some of the other jobs on this list like hedge funds, uh, wealth management, things like that. Assets here are basically just referring to investable dollars. So clients who have dollars to invest could be money already invested in real estate or anything else stocks and bonds of course so if you're picking stocks picking bonds if you run a portfolio of assets if you work for a pension fund through a state or uh, an endowment through a university asset management describes all of those different things it's just interesting for this list and this discussion because a lot of websites will list asset management as one of the best jobs in finance or a type of job in finance and again it's what people think of when they say hey I want to be an investor you will probably want to work in asset management next up retail banking really Really quickly is probably one of the worst jobs on this list. The defining characteristic in retail banking is going to be dealing with angry customers. Now of course most of the customers aren't going to be rude and angry to you but when you have people coming in off the street at a, at a branch of a local bank, whether you're like a manager or an associate manager, or if you're just a bank teller, or if you're working in like the loan department at a local bank, anything dealing with the general public, maybe people with no relationship to the financial institution that you work at, really coming in off the street and kind of asking about random products who, you know, they don't know exactly what they're looking for, which isn't necessarily their fault, but it can get annoying, especially when people start to become rude and, and treat you poorly. That is going to be a common thing in retail banking. This isn't particularly the highest paid uh, area of the finance industry and also could have some long hours. So when you're working a job that you might not necessarily want to be in and you're dealing with rude people, that's when the rude people will become the defining characteristic. You'll just want to avoid dealing with uh, upset people as much as possible. That'll be what sticks in your head every day when you think about going to work in the morning. So it's not a great job to have. Equity research, if you don't know, is like stock picking, stock research. You see a picture of Warren Buffett there, I think is a B tier job. Job. Equity research can seem really sexy when you're getting into it because everyone wants to be a stock picker when they're learning about the finance industry. That's like the first thing people go to. And there are a ton of really cool positions you could land. You could be like an analyst on Wall Street, JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, Goldman, whatever, at any of the big banks. Being a stock rating person, you could work at S&P or Moody's. Uh, assigning scores to these stocks. Morningstar is another example of that. But I think a lot of people may not totally consider the part of an equity research career that involves uh, cash flow modeling, DCF modeling, and making future projections on things that you, in a lot of cases, may be really unsure about. Sure, you're going to have the part of the job that's like business model analysis. Hey, is this product better than this product? And how can this business succeed relative to this business and the industry? And that type of stuff is fun. But just make sure when you're thinking about this career, you're also interested in the cash flow modeling and financial projection part of it, which ultimately is how you'll come up to your valuations or your buy sell recommendations, even though you're going to have the qualitative stuff, which is, I think, more interesting, in my opinion. You want to also know that you like the, the behind the scenes part of the job, crunching numbers. Next, we have corporate finance, and it can be a cool job, but I don't think it's great. I say it can be cool because you might end up on some really interesting projects, whether your company is like interested in a financial transaction, like going public or getting bought out through an LBO or something like that or just on a certain type of new product or strategy that the company is considering, maybe a new market they might wanna start operating in geographically or, or from a product standpoint. Especially if you're working in finance for a company or with products that you really personally believe in, that can make this job even better, maybe like a B tier or an A tier job even potentially. However, I think this job is gonna have maybe the most red tape out of anything else. You're just gonna be in a ton of meetings and big corporations have so many levels of management and so many things that you can and can't do. You kinda are gonna be assigned like 
tunnel vision type responsibilities. Here's what you work on. Here's your lane, stay in your lane. So you might not really get to be too expressive or share much of your ideas at all. And if that lane that you're assigned to to work on in whatever project the company is dealing with is not something you're super interested in, doesn't matter. You're probably stuck in that for a while. That'll depend a little bit too on your direct supervisor and things like that. But um, there's just some red tape you're going to run into here. Compliance, worst job on this list. Nobody likes you. And even though you got into compliance because you're interested in people doing the right thing and making sure actors in the finance industry are operating by the book to do the best work for investors and clients and things like that, that's not exactly what you'll feel like your responsibilities include. Most people working in compliance are gonna be running one to 10 different types of reports where they just have to check them out each week or each month and make sure that people are meeting certain guidelines and regulations. When someone deviates from the guideline or regulation, you have to call them out on it, ask why they're doing it, maybe try to slap them on the wrist, tell them to fix it. They're likely not gonna to want to because you're compliance. So this job is not fun and I think even people who are interested in that type of thing, don't actually get to implement what they're interested in through a compliance career. Consulting, I was really close to listing as an A tier, but I do think it's a B tier job. Consulting can have great work-life balance. You'll get to work on a ton of different projects, anywhere from like six weeks to six months, or maybe longer than six months in certain cases. So you'll see many different business models, many different industries, product lines, service offerings. Maybe the best way to get a lot of exposure to various industries in general, and certainly the best way to leapfrog out of finance into industry if you wanted to do something else in the future. But you're not really an investor here, so I think in relation to other finance careers, you can't really take advantage of financial markets, economics, things like that. Whereas you're more of like giving ideas and providing some services to third parties who are paying you or your company for your time. Anyone getting into consulting would know that. And so that's probably a given. I just think relative to some of the other opportunities within the finance industry, it's a little bit less attractive, but still a cool gig. Fixed income research. I would like to give a D2, but I think it's a C tier job. It's just going to be so boring, especially if you're doing like government bond work, anything to do with U.S. treasuries, even trading, certainly like treasury portfolio construction or uh, S&P or Moody's uh, rating of treasury bonds. You know, I don't have no idea what you even do all day long if you rate treasury bonds. They're all AAA, at least in the United States they are. So man, that would be a really boring job. Even running a fund, hedge fund or mutual fund of treasury bonds, I don't see being interesting. But I can't give it a D because people like it and the fixed income market is much bigger than the equity market in terms of cap. I think it's like three times bigger. So there's a much larger opportunity set, which means you could end up finding some really interesting jobs in say like emerging markets on some corporate paper that you know is, is really mispriced or something like that. And I've also heard from one person in the finance industry who works as a fixed income analyst valuing bonds with call and put options, which involves very complex mathematical formulas and and you have to be really accurate in the assumptions you make in those formulas too. Now this person just loves his job. He thinks it's awesome because it involves some really, really complex math, but also discretionary decision making around companies and which fixed income issues are going to do what and what are the will to be called, will they be put in things like that. So for those reasons, I can't put it at the lowest tier, even though I'm not interested in it. It's probably a C tier job in the finance industry. Okay, hedge funds, which everyone kind of loves and everyone wants to be a hedge fund manager later in their career. Not an S tier job, but, but it's an A tier job. I think hedge funds are awesome, especially if you're going to be working at one, you know, they involve some of the most specific but pretty complex types of investment strategies. You could be working at a hedge fund where there's no other office on the planet that is employing a certain investment strategy that fund is using, which means you'd be one of, you know, three people or one of 300 people, depending on the size of the fund that's that's using a certain you know, trading strategy, economic strategy, whatever it is. It's just really specialized and that can be interesting in investing. I think hedge funds, specifically the term hedge fund manager is notorious in the finance industry for being the single highest paid job that you can have. The working hours are not usually all that terrible. That's going to depend heavily on which fund you go to, but compensation's big. Hours aren't all that bad. The work can be extremely interesting. These jobs are not common though, because hedge funds are not all that common. And if you're someone who's actually considering working at a hedge fund, you know what fund you're trying to get into. You know the strategies you want to be working in. It's not just like, hey, I want to work at a hedge fund. I'm going to apply to 50 of them. No one or very, very few people start off their finance career at a hedge fund, you usually work into that from banking or, or equity research or something else. And then you network and meet some people and learn about funds and you kind of decide what type of strategies you might want to be working in. And then you would move in that direction. So there's a lot that goes into this one, but yes, I think it's one of the coolest jobs in the finance field.
Investment banking will be certainly the most controversial pick on my list. I'm going to give it a C. And there are some specific reasons for that. Investment banking can be a great job or career for a few reasons, but I think it's also a very terrible job or career for a few other reasons. Each person will rank order the importance of these various reasons much differently. And of course, we see that because many people are competing really hard to get into banking. I myself wouldn't do it. I think a lot of other people might agree with me. It's just not a job that they would go for. For the very early part of a finance career right out of university, investment banking is probably the single best thing you could do for your resume, especially if you got in at one of the top banks like Goldman, JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, or even some of the second tier banks, which would be like Credit Suisse, Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, Deutsche Bank, so a handful of others. You basically will have a rite of passage to do whatever else in the finance or investing industry you want for the rest of your life because you have that background. Having a couple years at a top tier bank on your resume is probably better than any MBA program on the planet for good reason. I mean, you're going to get a ton of exposure. You're going to learn a lot about the, the top end of the finance industry. Private equity and hedge funds can often stem from this. And these are the reasons why people compete so much for the investment banking internships and investment banking analyst jobs during college and right after college because it can be so valuable to their career long term. It's a smart move to make. But investment banking can also carry literally the worst working hours on the entire planet. I have several friends who have gone into banking, either starting out in internships or doing the internships and then doing two years as an analyst at an investment bank. I mean, no disrespect to slavery at all by making this comparison, but I have heard from multiple people that working at an investment bank feels exactly in their opinion as being a slave. Of course, you're still getting paid a lot of money, which is why it's far better than slavery. But just in terms of the way you're treated, you know, the way that you are respected as a person, the way that your time is respected, it, it, both of those things are, are zero. They're, they're non-existent. They don't respect you. You can be treated very poorly and your time is not respected at all. And of course, it's not going to be respected if you're working 80 to 100 hours a week, literally in some weeks, you're just staying there four days straight a lot of all-nighters, just sleeping two or three hours some nights, waking right back up at the office. You're treated like a slave in a lot of instances, and that's why I've seen people leave investment banking, even though it can be the greatest resume builder ever. So again, it's only for the right person. If you really wanna grind as hard as anyone on the planet could ever possibly grind out a job, and build your resume in a very significant way. Investment banking could be great for you. If you wanna have any part of living your actual life outside of work, this would be the worst job in the world. I think the C tier is kind of a compromise for it. Private equity is a really, really cool one. I think I would be super interested in working in this field. I don't have the, the chops or resume to ever go into it, but I'm not gonna give it an A with these other two just because those can be a lot more flexible. I think private equity is probably a B tier job. And honestly, maybe more often than not, you do get paid more in PE than in hedge funds. It's just not as commonly talked about, so it doesn't have the same reputation as working at a hedge fund does. But it's still one of the highest paid careers in the finance industry. It's higher paid than investment banking, especially as an analyst or an associate. But it does take a couple years of probably working in investment banking to break into. It has more flexible hours, meaning you work a little bit less than you might have in, in some banks, maybe similar to as a hedge fund, maybe still a little more than a hedge fund now. The only thing that might be keeping private equity back from an A tier like a hedge fund job is that you're still really grinding through a lot of the financial modeling work that you were probably doing in investment banking building out PowerPoints. I know some people love that stuff, so it's not a bad thing. I just don't think the job is all that dynamic. It's pretty similar to banking and the work that you do. You just get paid more and have, have less hours that you have to put in. But for a lot of people really familiar with the finance industry, PE is kind of the golden child and, and more desirable than hedge funds to work in. It's a great stepping stone from investment banking. So if you had to design like the most competitive finance resume on the planet, it would go something like top university, two years of investment banking, two years of private equity, uh, get an MBA from a top three MBA program, and then maybe go work at a hedge fund. So many people might use private equity as the next stepping stone in their career. Sales, kind of self-explanatory. I'm ranking it fairly low as a C tier job. It might be an S tier job if you're the right person. I just think that most people aren't the right person to get into sales. Any sales job is gonna involve like at least 80%, probably 90, 95% rejection. And you're just gonna have to be grinding phone calls and emails and, and product offerings to people trying to get them to buy from you. Getting rejected 90% of the time in whatever you do is not fun, especially when it's how you generate your income. So sales can really be a stressful job because the compensation is so much based on performance and your performance might be really difficult to come by. I don't think it's a great job in the finance industry. For a lot of people though, it can be an awesome way into finance if you don't have a strong like university background or if you don't have any previous internship experience. 
getting into a sales role, usually you'll get hired in just with good, good charisma, not because you had a finance background. You can then use to springboard into something that you might actually want to be doing. Trading, I think is super cool. And if done right, could be an S tier job. I'm going to give it a B just because the risk that involves it, similar to sales, is very much performance based. So you could lose your job in like a matter of three or four weeks if you had a bad three or four weeks on the trading desk. And you're only going to get a job if you have a strong trading track record anyway, at least a good trading job, especially for like one of the bigger banks. But just taking advantage of the capital markets and how they work and being able to eke out profits, uh, sometimes in really low risk environments, I think is a really cool notion. It could be a super fun way to make a career, especially if you built out like your own little niche that very few other people are taking advantage of and profiting from. Trading can be a lot of fun when it works out right, but also very stressful when it's not working. So it's not a top tier job, but it's certainly a cool job in finance and a really desirable one for a lot of people. Also note the hours too here. Trading uh, is great for someone who likes working earlier hours in the day. I think really commonly traders will start at like 6 a.m. and still work relatively long to like 5 p.m., but that's not the crazy hours you'll have in some of the other top tiers in finance. And then later on in a trading career, if you make it to like a senior level position, you might just be going home at market close or something. So uh, 3 p.m. if you're in Chicago, which would be a pretty nice work-life balance. I don't know why it's last on this list, but wealth management, what I do, I'll give a B tier job. I personally probably think it's like an A tier job just because it can be really dynamic. You're not really pigeonholed into any one thing. And to me, it's like the opposite of corporate finance. It's pretty similar to consulting in that respect. You can work on a lot of different types of projects. It's not an A tier job or an S tier job for this list though, because sometimes you're also gonna deal with upset clients like in retail banking. At least they're not random people off the street and they're gonna have to have a little bit more respect for you necessarily. You know, dealing with unhappy people is not unique to retail banking or wealth management in the finance industry. You're always gonna have unhappy people. It's just that in those two jobs, maybe along with sales too, you deal with the most outside parties. Whereas most of the jobs on this list, you're dealing with like your internal team or your direct supervisor and your management team. And you're working with with non-financially literate or financially educated people, it can get a little bit weird sometimes when they just want to do irrational things or have irrational questions. And certainly when they're getting upset over irrational uh, concerns in the finance field. So uh, it's a B-tier job though, really cool. You can make a great income doing this, but it, it also can carry one of the lower incomes out of everything on the list here. So, so just know exactly what you're getting into if you want to work in wealth management but it can also probably have the single most flexible working hours, sometimes meaning the least working hours of any job on that list, which uh, might be something that you're interested in for a long-term career too. Last point to note here is that I did not list any careers as an S tier career, and that was for a reason. The phrase, you need to love your job, I don't think is realistic. And so I'm someone who doesn't wanna rate any food like at a 10 out of 10 or any movie at 10 out of 10. So that feeling kind of applies to this list. I don't think there's any right now that I've seen really amazing like finance job that everyone's gonna love, which is what it would take for me to give one of them an S. I just think it's basically impossible to love something that you have to do every day. Even like people who love basketball and are lucky enough to become professional basketball players or football, soccer players, whatever, they don't love going to practice every single day. There are certain days where they'd like to stay home and relax or get things done at home or they have other obligations they need to get to and they can't because they have to go to practicing that example or work. So I don't think there exists a job in adult life that everyone's gonna love and so I'm not giving any job an S tier on this list. If you think that's stupid because we have a scale and we should be utilizing it, then maybe just put the two A tier jobs that I listed as A tiers as S tiers. And then a couple of those B tiers as A that I said were maybe a little bit more favorable than the others. Anyway, this is how I think it looks. So if you're at this point in the video, it means you watched the whole thing. Thank you very much for sticking around. That YouTube algorithm loves the extended watch time you just gave this video. If you could also like this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Both of those things also really help me out and I appreciate them. As always, thanks for watching.